ओके सो वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट वर्शिप एंड वी टॉक अबाउट द एक्सोडस इवेंट देर अगेन वी सी गॉड इज वर्किंग इन द हिस्ट्री इन हिस्स ऑन टाइम एंड देन गॉड डेलीवर्स हिस पीपल वेन गॉड डेलीवर्स दिस पीपल अगेन द रीसन फॉर डेलीवरिंग दम इज वर्शिप they are sent to worship god they were both spiritually physically bound so release from the physical bondage is also leading them to yet another place because they were not staying there itself it it said they are going to a far place to worship there were questions concerning the same thing no place of worship is set another thing place of worship is set another thing that we need to discuss throughout in old testament or new testament this place of worship is important in the old testament we have uh, from there if you look at the exodus story and then we have the story of people of israel established how they were in the wilderness and then coming to canaan and then they are coming into the place of settlement <coughs> in judea jerusalem and then they have the temple there in jerusalem temple as the center of worship in the old testament there are three major things were important for people of israel one the law that the lord has given for them to follow second to the land that the lord has given them it is a promised land canaan they are coming and settling there and thirdly the temple was also so significant for them law lord and uh, uh, the temple all these things were very important for them they were concerned about these things and uh, if you look at again in the time of babylonian captivity i'm just drastically shifting there are many places of point to say about worship but i'm shifting drastically to the babylonian exile in the babylonian period also we find these people were in the exile and they cannot worship god in the foreign land if you look at the history of this community and we say that this community <laughs> they sat in the by the river of babylon and they sang a song they sang the song there saying how can we sing the name of the lord in the foreign land so they were hanging their musical instruments in the trees and sitting there near the babylonian river and saying they cannot use the name of the lord in the foreign land so this is the problem that we have it in exodus where people of israel were in bondage in egypt they cannot really worship god in the foreign land this is one of the theological aspect they had they thought the people of israel thought they cannot worship god beyond the territories beyond the territories now we find this narrowing down from uh, the babylonian from the egyptian bondage then to the wilderness experience how they worship god how they continued walking with god there again it is not the the structured worship as what we have within the church that was not the model of worship they had it in the old testament there was a progressive development in the worship that they had and from there we have uh, the people of israel settling in uh, uh, palestine and surrounding areas even there even there only two tribes were truly in connection with this temple judea and those who were staying in that area when we come to the new testament period only the jewish community maintained this religious purity all other groups got mixed and married with other community other people and then you know no more the same kind of worship that they had in the old testament now when we talk about worship elements of worship when we talk about the place of worship responsibilities in worship sacraments in worship all these things are also part of worship which i am not uh, detailedly dealing with them now we have when you talk about the church we have universal and local church and worship is also must be seen in that light in the old testament people of israel worshiped in the temple when they come to temple to offer sacrifices when they offer the sacrifices they thought they were worshiping god and the ultimate worship that we must present to god we know what paul says in uh, romans chapter 12 offer your bodies as living sacrifice that is pleasing to god as the true worship so this is actually a shift taking place from the old testament understanding of worship to the new testament understanding of worship we know about jesus he participated in the synagogue worship he went to the temple for worship 
but those were limited when he is talking that to the samaritan woman when jesus was talking to samaritan woman in john chapter 4 we find there he says the time is approaching she says we are well satisfied with the way we worship now but that the shift is taking place how we we can make a comparison between what is real worship or christian worship and the difference between uh, true worship and false type of worship then we see that jesus is telling her the time is approaching what the element she emphasized there is worshiping god in mountains because in the old testament we find god revealed himself in the mountains and we know that in when god is revealing his uh, law these people were coming near the mount god said sanctify them and they were around the mount compare it with in matthew chapter 5 we see jesus went up to the mount sat there to teach reflecting the same kind of worship they had in the old testament now when we look at this frame of worship within the old testament or in the new testament as these people understood god as a god of mountains and worshiping god in mountains she says we are worshiping in this mount mount gerizim and jesus is telling not this mount or mount uh, jerusalem none of these places but you are going to worship the lord from your heart mind and soul there we reconstruct what is christian worship what is christian worship christian worship is involvement of body soul and spirit ultimately concentrating in god and serving him christian christian worship is the worship with the whole personality whole being worshiping god with the whole heart spirit mind with all what we are we are offering ourselves to god that is the true worship now where do we worship and when do we worship where do we worship we look at the bible and we see that in the old testament people worship uh, beginning from the early stage they began worshiping god by building an altar altar is the place where we put all our trust all our burdens all our problems and uh, as abraham brought his son to the altar and then he gave it to god and god says now i know you are not fearing you are not worried to give your son to me that is ultimate worship we find so there we see the full mind and heart and soul of the person to give oneself or one's best to god abraham knew very well i sacrifice it i put it here in the altar and what is god's will will return to me that is the trust when we have the lord and when we are worshiping him we give everything into god's feet and see what god wills will return to us in the jewish tradition in the israelite tradition they believe actually abraham has sap abraham has sacrificed his son that is what we read in hebrews also he sacrificed his son literally he sacrificed and then in their tradition they say that from the ashes he called back his son abraham called back isaac from the ashes that is the tradition of israelites now when we look at the place of worship the concentration of oneself in god complete surrender of oneself ceasing one's own identity and identifying with god is the real time of worship now when we say this is complete perfect state of worship let me ask when does it happen when are we worshiping god we are worshiping god not just when we are seated with other believers inside the church because now we know we are no more in a condition as worshiping god in the churches this is also teaching us what is there in the bible because this church constructions building churches mansion model or uh, you know maybe palace type churches someone the other day was telling that we build so big church and uh, when one is entering into the church feels a kind of pride that we have such a big church to worship so place of worship is not the building that we are worshiping i always think worship as i said in the first part of it the perfection of individual perfect relationship one has with god 
in the eternal place every move of the creature is the worship to god if it so where we sit is the place of worship every move in our perfection if it's there that is worship and when i deal with actually uh, you know uh, the life of people christians even our workplace is the place of worship our playground is the place of worship for women even the kitchen and the new can corner of the house is the place of worship every service we render every activity we do can turn to be a worship to god if there is a proper relation with god if our hearts and minds are surrendered to god and attached to god then every move we move is the worship to god furthermore there are so many things the elements in worship songs in worship hymns in worship uh, sharing god's word in worship testimonies in worship this all part of the services we have in the congregational worship we have individual worship and congregational worship two types of worship individual worship and congregational worship individual worship the person's relationship is highlighted as in the case of summit roman a personal relationship with god a personal surrender to god a personal interaction with god personal worship to god community worship we have even in the old testament this is the cultic model of worship the people of israel saw it among the community that they lived in egypt or in other territorial places where they lived they had the festivals feast and that were the times of communal worship we do have even uh, psalms written for the communal worship we have psalms for the individual worship so songs or uh, uh, singing or other practices or other uh, expressions or forms of expressions of worship are also part of the communal worship when we have uh, the band ready choir ready singing either individually or uh, as choir singing or these are the method that we adopt to worship god even sharing god's word is also a kind of worship everything that is part of the service is worship to god we say sunday worship but there we have many things so think of those different aspects related with worship too and when we discuss about these things uh, within the framework of uh, theology how we say that the responsibility of human beings to worship god we are created truly to worship god not to sit in one particular place and clapping hands and serving the lord or worshiping him in uh, uh, spirit alone but every moment we need to have the same spirit to worship serving the lord with all our attitude heart mind and soul so just narrowing it down the summary of what we have discussed one worship in the old test worship in the bible under that two points worship in old testament worship in new testament under worship in old testament we deal with creation and worship exodus experience and worship law and worship in the old testament psalms and hymns and worship in old testament cultic practices communal worship in the old testament in the new testament jesus emphasizes on worship worship of the whole being okay worship as a person's whole being surrendered to god secondly worship in the early church they worshiped uh, with the jewish community in the synagogue so synagogue worship the first stage second worship in the house churches that was the second stage in which they gathered in the worship uh, places as maybe a room in a house to sacraments they practice baptism and lord supper which we will come later on but they were also part of worship and then we look at the eschatological expectation of worship worship in the eternal state there every move of the individual is worship and in the present time we try to apply the same thing as paul says that every moment transformed living and worshiping god as pleasing to god offering our ourself our body soul and spirit as one to god
So I pause there for a minute. If you have any questions, please raise. Okay. If there is nothing, or if you have some more, if you need some more time to reflect on, maybe put your questions in the chat box. And if there is uh, no, uh, you know, questions, then we'll move to the next topic. I'll try to finish it in a little more shorter time. Okay, I move on to the next topic. If the general day lot of the court, tell him that it and say that I'm in a meeting. The next topic that we are dealing with is uh, the question that might have been given to you. Logical relation between word and sacraments. Word and sacraments. Word and sacraments. So when we look at the Bible, when we look at the New Testament, when we look at the early church, we find sacraments as imparting, experiencing word in life. We know what is God's word. What do we mean by word? The revealed God is word. God has revealed himself in his word. Word is revealed to us in the form of the scripture that we use it all and New Testament. And this is the place where we find God is revealing himself through the word. We understand God from the word. Now, sacraments are from the part of human beings. We say God's word or word is a spiritual part of it. But whereas sacrament is the material part of it. We know two major sacraments that we have for the church, baptism and Lord's Supper. But beyond which, in the testament, we look at sacrament as they practiced stage number 245 245 word and a sacrament worship the previous one was from page number 261 the previous topic from page number 261 what we are discussing now, sacrament from page number 245. 245. The comparison between word and sacraments given there. The comparison between word and sacrament given there. And if you want to look at those things, you can see it. <laughs> but uh, Sometimes I may not be in this lecture and read those things. It will surely help you. It will surely help you to understand it uh, comprehensively. So there you have in page number 245, it is talking about baptism and uh, Lord's Supper as the two sacraments in the Old Testament. But just now I said about We also have the other aspects in the following passages, uh, pages. If you want me to just uh, uh, just say those things, I can. The first one, tradition, tradition, because we receive this sacrament from the tradition. Uh, for us, we practice these two aspects of baptism and Lord's Supper are uh, part of the biblical tradition. Baptism, we know it in the intertestamental period. The other day, I shared about women and community. They practiced uh, this ritual washing, uh, same as baptism, but repeated baptism. Christian baptism is different from even John's baptism. 
system of dependence and then being baptized or uh, being part of God's church or uh, things like that because they think that when we are part of a particular tradition, when we are part of a church, then that is more of the physical realm. But once we have relation with God, when we read God's word, that is more spiritual. They understand the difference between or they make a difference between spiritual and material. But that is not the case because we cannot truly worship God without the material world. Because we live in a physical body. We live within physical realm. And this physical realm is made of material thing. This physical realm is made of material thing. And when we have this material realm in which we live, we need also material things to worship God. For example, when we are partaking in Lord's table, we are taking bread and we or bread are the material things. But these material things are used to express our worship towards necessary as long as we are in the physical body to express our uh, you know worship to god or express experience the uh, you know sacraments to our life and uh, if you look at even in the tradition if uh, in the history of christianity luther has also talked about this that is in connection with justification once the person is accepting the lord when they are sacraments, we are not uh, characters within the person can participate in the Lord's table. And the purpose that we say the inner man is growing, the inner person is growing. Who is that inner person is a spiritual being. So even when we take the material things, that is bread and wine, we experience the spiritual person's growth. We experience the spiritual person's growth. And in the Reformation period, this was important because especially lord's table they understood differently uh, two different understanding one in the roman catholic tradition they have sacraments in every worship service every time they gather together they have this uh, uh, breaking your bread or you carry celebrated the reason because they say that jesus said do it in remembrance of me do it in remembrance of me which means whenever shape you remember him and therefore you are taking part in lord's table so remember do it in remembrance of me first of all it is interpreted as doing it every time we are remembering him second in the Protestant traditions, Lord Day of Table depends on place and church. Now, when we talk about this one, why are we not practicing Lord's Table in every meeting? It's simple because what Jesus said is, do it in remembrance of me. Or in other words, when you're doing it, remember me. Because when we remember him, for example, we remember him now. We remember him in this moment, but we cannot celebrate Lord's Table now. We remember him every day, every moment, every hour. It is impossible to practice Lord's table every time when we remember him. But when we are partaking in Lord's table, maybe once in a month or once in two months or uh, every week, we do it while we celebrate Lord's table. We recall his death, resurrection, ascension and expect his return. He she partaking in lots a kind of shift taking place from one move to the next so in the 
we are partaking lord's table which means we remember him every time but when we partake we recall his death resurrection ascension and his return and uh, technical terminology you have it in page number 248 the terms related with uh, uh, you know baptism lord's table form uh, the mode of baptism in the roman catholic tradition and some of the as tradition they have sprinkled baptism putting pouring water or sprinkling water upon the individual uh, but in the protestant tradition especially in the pentecostal tradition we have it in more biblical tradition we see that jesus went into the water came up from the water not came, came up which means he was out of the water he came up from the water that literally means he went under the water came up and we know it about burial Uh, we compare it when paul is talking about baptism uh, he talks about uh, death burial and resurrection of the individual we were dead in christ buried with christ we cannot bury upon the i mean you know by sprinkling but instead uh, the sprinkling the soil but uh, we keep it under the earth so the same level we talk about baptism there are uh, arguments for and against but uh, we don't enter into those things mode of baptism we say as the most baptism which, which is followed in the early church or in the late period of the church and then we talk about uh, uh, the elements in baptism baptism for us it is just a most baptism and therefore water is the major uh, component there and then in places where there is no water no water people also baptize in sand and things like that some people baptize in water but i don't enter into those things now we also have a baptism practiced as i said in the inter testament period particularly with the kumaran community effective baptism a person's uh, request to god for a clear conscience uh, we know about jesus jesus part took baptism john gave him baptism jesus baptism was john's baptism but not baptism of repentance but jesus says that it is for the fulfillment of all righteousness so it is the fulfillment that he underwent baptism because he is going to take the world's sin and moving from there in the early church they practice baptism in the initial stage they practice baptism in the time of john john's baptism baptism of repentance in the next level they baptized in the name of jesus baptized in the name of jesus but once the church established as we find in matthew chapter 28 verses 18 following that place we find baptizing them in the name of father son and holy spirit so baptism in the name of triun god we find there in the reconstruction of uh, these things in the next again is materialism in one side but the sacraments are in relation with uh, being god in the world god is uh, word and sacrament so Uh, essential character sacrament can be most clearly in the creature to respond to god these are used that uh, we experience god sacraments also are the agents of knowing god and the components in uh, uh, lord's table or sa- uh, sacrament we say lord's table wine or uh, uh, you know bread are the two important elements and they are also used in the ancient mediterranean world they had you know festive meals in the early church there was also a, uh, a confusion a confusion between agape meal and lord's table and paul is talking about dealing with it in first corinthians and when you read first corinthians chapter 12 you come to those areas and then you discuss chapter 11 12 that you may read through those things and you find how paul is defining those things in connection with even the spiritual gifts so when paul is talking about the baptism or one son participation of lord's table in first corinthians chapter 11 we find uh, that is in connection with one's close relationship with god rebuilding the relationship with god so when we are partaking in lord's table two things are there one we are requesting god for a clear conscience as with baptism second because we live a holy life we partake in lord's table so uh, need to remember those things also individual sacraments how uh, each individual is accepting in the roman catholic tradition they have the confirmation uh, child baptism or infant baptism which we do not accept we don't have any biblical records of the same and sometimes the roman catholics would say that you know uh, the whole family of lydia came into 
the faith and there may be small children and therefore we uh, give baptism as a family but this we cannot accept because when the people of israel celebrated passover meal they celebrated passover meal as a family but we know that a child of three months cannot take the meat cannot take the meat so in the lord's table that we are talking about all those who can have it only can we said the great commission it is to those who believe believe was baptism those who believe in jesus can receive baptism that is the biblical understanding and uh, many more things to talk about all these things baptism lord's table and in the history and in the development of church how baptism and lord's supper are understood interpreted uh, and then the literal presence of god in a the sac sacrament that we celebrate some say in the uh, you know uh, roman catholic tradition how they understand when they take the bread and it is starting to be the um, body of jesus or flesh of jesus and they try to highlight those things and uh, you may read all those things there in the text and if, do you want uh, any question to be discussed then you may raise it otherwise i stop there i'll move to the next The next topic that we have, I think I'll move and uh, if there is some questions, maybe we'll deal with later. Page number 229, page number 229 in your material. The question there, what is the relationship between uh, the theological and sociological approach to the reality of the church? And then we see there in uh, uh, page number 229 onwards, uh, the same topic. Mm -hmm. Church. For us, when we look at in the present context, we talk about church from the biblical tradition, either sociological, theological aspect of the church. First of all, church is the place of the union of faithful, union of faithful, but it is the place of communal relationship. We know in Christian tradition, both vertical and horizontal relationships are emphasized. Vertical relationship that we have relation with God and the horizontal relationship that we maintain with fellow brethren. And when these two things are said, uh, when we deal with the church and uh, these two relationship of towards God, towards human beings, is very well suiting in the church context we know we have universal church and the local church church is not the building that we see it is just the construction the building that is different church is a bit more abstract and it is mysterious when building they were added but it is the virtual understanding of the union of people and church as i said it is the union the place of, of unity place of union of believers incorporated into the church again that is to the larger understanding or the universal church they are incorporated to and therefore church is not limited physically in one place or among one particular people group or one particular denomination but it is a universal church we are being part of it uh, i think you may have to read things a bit more detailly from the text and it is the community of hope as i said community 
congregation of faithful same as this community of hope we look forward for the return of the lord and our hope is his return the hope of the church is the return of christ so please read through it and then uh, uh, try preparing yourself to present it maybe as i summarize it i may say two different aspect one bible biblical presentation of the church uh, i have been dealt with ecclesia uh, ecclesiology how uh, it is understood with different aspects church is the place of uh, believers or faithful union of the faithful with christ and between each other vertical horizontal relationship it is the body of christ it is the bride of christ uh, in a, the relation between bride and the bridegroom and uh, the fellowship of the spirit is emphasized and it is the community of hope according to the tradition the difference between protestant and roman catholic tradition you may think about it how they recognized about church understand about church all those who enter their name in the church register is part of god's kingdom is the simple understanding of their uh, you know uh, ecclesia contemporary issues and the reconstruction of church in the present context is challenging especially for us if we uh, implicate to the present context and covid 19 and uh, how we worship god in uh, zoom zoom becoming our place of worship or you know platform for worship there no more the church construction buildings and other things but we do lack so many things here in uh, uh, such kind of worship uh, you know interaction as we say about the classroom settings face to face and i contact with the students are missing in virtual classroom and the same with the fellowship of the believers we can say talk how are you but when we have the physical presence of people and relationship with people is completely different so uh, think of those things and reflect on the same and uh, the next topic is about uh, sanctification involved in the process of christian life sanctification page number 195 page number 195 holy spirit and sanctification now um, these in theological terminologies or theological um, jargons that we use sometimes like salvation sanctification glorification justification all these things uh, same as we discuss some other time about kingdom of god there are three aspects three aspects if you talk about salvation we were being saved we were being saved the past event present we are being saved the process and the future when the lord returns he will save us salvation in the future same justification the time when we accepted the lord we were justified at present we are in the process of justification and when he returns he will justify us fully to be with him in sanctification the same thing what we continue to eternity is the same holiness that we expect it is in the process we begin our christian life we accept the lord not because we became uh, saints we were sinners we were moving towards the sanctity and a holy life from the time we accepted the lord till the time at present or till his return we are made holy by god past event we were been sanctified by his blood when we were cleansed from our sins we were sanctified we were cleansed and we began this uh, uh, holy life and at present it, it is in the process jesus says even in the sermon on the mount be perfect as my father in heaven is perfect this perfect state of holiness perfect state of sanctity is not happening in a day it is a process and if somebody make a question that is it will want to be sanctified fully want to be perfect fully on earth then i say yes 
what is impossible will not be heaven is perfect will not be perfect perfection but we move towards this sanctification it is in the process the reason for sealing us with the, the blood of jesus or with the holy spirit we are being sealed for that day that day of redemption so this sealing with his spirit is also an affirmation when we have his spirit with us it is an affirmation that we are being cleansed daily from our sins and we have been sanctified through the time that we walk with god we need this sanctification daily same as paul says the transformation of the body we need to be transformed daily and so us we need to be sanctified daily and when you look at your text you may find it from page number 195 onwards old testament in the old testament it is a personal interaction of one's self with god and cleansing first of all by circumcision one is uh, accepted by god and second every sacrifice they offer they offer the sprinkling of blood of animal upon the person for this sanctification cleansing but in the old testament it is covering the sin in the old testament it is covering the sin covering uh, with the blood of the animal but in the new testament it is complete erasing of the sin wiping out of sin no more the power of sin can have uh, you know the strength upon the individual the power of sin cannot hold the god and his blood once they are sanctified the power of sin cannot hold them back and again it is a constant uh, persistence of the individual and often i say uh, the, the consequence of sin is sin same sin will compel you to sin tomorrow or if you commit sin today if we commit sin today we were sinning yesterday so the consequences sin we continue in sin the same the consequence of sanctification is sanctification process we continue to tomorrow if we do not continue today or if we do not begin it today it will not continue to tomorrow the reconstruction of the same simplification uh, or the presentation related with one being sanctified the process are there in the text uh, i wish that i have more time to say all these things but look at it justification is also part of sanctification we were been justified made holy made holy made just or made his grace is making us holy we committing sins and we come to god to cleanse us with his blood and cover us with his grace and he gives his grace and only thing if we do not go to him we are continuing in the sin how great the sin may be how simple the sin may be remember every time to go to the lord because we read it in the epistle of john john says children do not commit sin that is the rule for christians do not commit sin but he continues graciously but if one of you sins we have our mediator we have our lord to cleanse us from our sin so remember every time to reach to this god time the mistake return back to him come back to him with repentance i stop there for that particular topic and the last topic that we are discussing is the difference between salvation old testament and new testament salvation old testament and new testament page number 163 theology uh, uh, regulation civil righteousness freedom that also we have it in the new testament in pauline writings we find it and we also lead a life of victorious christian living through salvation biblical then uh, uh, you know no more slaves but free people serving the lord salvation experienced as deliverance from every bondage every bondage there are also theories related with salvation passion death of jesus christ as uh, expiratory or uh, uh, you know uh, the redemption brought in the place 
of sacrificing himself ransom ransom jesus is being sacrificed as ransom for many this ransom aspect of ransom is also important paid or is it paid to satan or to whom but remember there is no payment given to god payment given to satan but it is the payment for sin that is one side we have the blood of jesus on the other side we have sin when we say paying ransom this blood is paid on the place of sin and both are no more and there we find the erasing of both these things his blood is given and the sin is there and once his blood is poured upon the sin paid for sin and then no more its power is seen uh, hope i said uh, for your communication or you repeatedly see this record and you will understand what i meant and in the christian uh, experience that we say about one's salvic experiences salvation from every bondage every sin and it is also constructing the relationship with god in union with god dt god and the humanity is also made and the logical analog is related with salvation biblical or ecclesiastical understanding of salvation there are metaphors used uh, primarily salvation is also deliverance as we say sometimes we talk about healing in connection with salvation but remember when we preach the gospel preach not healing a salvation come to the lord you will receive healing that is not the message of the gospel don't preach that come to the lord you will get a job don't tell the people come and pray join with our church that all your family problems will be settled it is salvation is beyond all these things when we come to the lord we come to the lord because if you say to someone come to our church because you will have healing they will say i don't have any sickness but salvation is the major focus it is a center focus for the death of jesus he died on the cross for our salvation that is primary all other things are added to it healing or uh, you find a job you find peace in him all these are the outcome of it but the basic reason for him to die in the cross is for salvation this salvation nobody can give healing maybe people would say that in the world there are many healers many magicians people those who would offer job or give money god is not as uh, you know what uh, picture that we give for god give god the picture he is the savior nobody can save us except god except jesus no one has died for our sins so salvation is the basic aspect or reason for jesus to die in the cross or he achieved it in the cross the death of jesus achieved salvation than any other things and uh, many more things to talk about salvation how paul recognized salvation understood salvation the logical aspect related with salvation for whom it is given and liberation theology is also talking about salvation salvation aspect of uh, deliverance and liberation from every bondage so i stop there though uh, i haven't dealt uh, faithfully all these things detailedly i understand the limitation for myself and the time that we have but uh, i love to continue teaching as this but uh, anyway stop for now thank you so much thank you